The next section is subacute combined degeneration of the cord. I've always hated the word subacute because anytime I think that I've got damage to my spinal cord resulting in position loss of pain and temperature and all kinds of position and vibratory sense and permanent neurological damage, I never think of it as subacute. I think it's damn emergency, wouldn't you? Subacute. What's a subacute? Because it takes a few weeks? Well, subacute combined degeneration of the cord is from B12 deficiency. Oh, look at our little friend there. Look, it's a hypersegmented neutrophil. Let's I one, two, three, four lobes. One, two, three. Three, four lobes. One, two, three, four lobes. Who are these little bad boys? Who are these little bad boys? Why, they're little platelets. Look how cute they are. Oh, they're little platelets. Oh, they're so cute. Ticka, 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 ticka. Oh, ticka me little platelet. Ticka me little platelet. Hey, look at these cells that look like an oval. Look at these oval shaped cells. Oval shaped cells. Oval shaped cells. Oval shaped cells. What do you call it when you have an oval shaped cell? You call it in ovalocyte. So when you have vitamin B12 deficiency, vitamin B12 deficiency gives you oval cells. Vitamin B12 deficiency gives you a macrocytic anemia. Vitamin B12 deficiency gives you a macrocytic anemia. It gives you ovalocytes. Vitamin B12 deficiency gives you an increased bilirubin, an increased LDH. Ovalocytes, B12 deficiency. By the way, a, a, what is the difference between macrocytic anemia and megaloblastic? What's the difference between macrocytic and megaloblastic? Macrocytic just means a high MCV. Macrocytic just means a high MCV. And megaloblastic means hypersegmented. Megaloblastic means increased number of segments. Now, megaloblastic basically means B12 and folate. Now, what is the difference between B12 and folate deficiency hematologically? What is the difference between B12 and folate in terms of their blood disorder? And the answer is nothing. What is the difference between these? They are identical. They are identical hematologically. What is the difference between these? B12 and folate are identical hematologically. And what is the difference between these? Is that B12 deficiency gives you neurological abnormalities. Now, what is the most common neurological abnormality to occur with vitamin B12 deficiency? What is the most common? And the answer is a peripheral neuropathy. Now that doesn't stick out in the mind because a lot of things could cause peripheral neuropathy. Pins and needles and glove and stocking. Pins and needles and glove and stocking. Pins and needles and glove and stocking pattern. That's not that special. Lots of things do it. It comes out, as a matter of fact, looking just the same as diabetes. It comes out the same looking as di diabetes. So the issue is, is that pins and needles looks the same as diabetes. Looks the same as pyridoxine. Looks the same as vitamin B6. Looks the same as alcohol. Looks the same as a lot of things. So it doesn't stand out in the memory. What is the most common neurological manifestation of B12 deficiency? Peripheral neuropathy. What neurological manifestation can you get? Anything. Dementia, autonomic, and bowel, and bladder, and mo uh, motor sensory and cerebellar, cognitive and cranial nerve, what can you get? Anything. Well, why are we talking about subacute combined degeneration of the cord? Let's take a look here. Well, subacute combined degeneration of the cord, distal paresthesias is another way of saying peripheral neuropathy. Distal paresthesias is another way of saying peripheral neuropathy. Extremity weakness is another way of saying that vitamin B12 deficiency can do anything. There's extremity weakness, and bilateral B12, B12 deficiency can do anything. Progresses to spastic paraparesis and ataxia is simply saying that B12 deficiency can do anything. But what is different, what's unique, 
is that subacute combined degeneration of the cord with B12 deficiency has a special predilection for the posterior column. So B12 deficiency has a special predilection for wanting to destroy the posterior column. So it has a special predilection for zapping position and vibratory sense. There's not that many things that do that. Vitamin B12 deficiency can do it. What else can do that? It's an infection. And it is syphilis. It is syphilis. What other thing can do that? Not much. What else? Syphilis. What else? Syphilis. Subacute combined degeneration of the cord. High MCV. Macroavalocytes. Hypersegmented neutrophils. <gasps> hey, it looks like hemolysis. You get a high bilirubin. Hey, it looks like hemolysis. You get a high LDH. Hey, it looks like hemolysis. You get a high bilirubin. Hey, it looks like hemolysis. You get a high LDH. Hey, bilirubin, LDH. Bilirubin, LDH. Well, what's going to be the difference between this and hemolysis then? What's going to be the difference between this and hemolysis? Hemolysis gives you an increased reticulocyte count. And B12 deficiency is going to have a low reticulocyte count because reticulocytes are destroyed in B12 deficiency as soon as they leave the marrow. Vitamin B12 and syphilis are two of the only things that will destroy just the posterior column. However, remember, B12 deficiency can present with any neurological finding. It's just that peripheral neuropathy is the most common and posterior column is rather characteristic of B12. There's not that many things that do uh, posterior column. Lots of things cause peripheral, but very little that does posterior column. Now, what's the difference between B12 and folate? B12 is the only one that has neuro findings, neuro findings. You have a low level of B12. However, you're also looking for an increased methyl malonic acid. When you have a falsely normal B12 level, you look for an increased level of methylmalonic acid, which is a precursor in B12 production and use. Our next slide, you can have a low B12. However, remember, 30% of people will have a normal B12 level because B12 level is an acute phase reactant. The carrier protein, the transcobalamin, is an acute phase reactant, goes up with stress. White count transcobalamin goes up. Sedimentation rate transcobalamin goes up. Se ferritin uh, goes up. White count, sedimentation rate, C-reactive protein, ferritin, transcobalamin. Step on my toe, give me cancer, give me trauma, give me widespread infection. White count, sed rate, C-reactive protein, ferritin, and transcobalamin. A white count, sed rate, C-reactive protein, ferritin, and transcobalamin. These are all acute phase reactants. Hey, do you know 30% of people with iron deficiency have a normal ferritin? Why? Ferritin is an acute phase reactant. White count, sedimentation rate, C-reactive protein, ferritin, and transcobalamin, they go up with stress. And in B12, did you know that 30% of people with a B12 level, B12 deficiency have a normal B12? because transcobalamin is an acute phase reactant. That's why we look for an increased methylmalonic acid level. Remember, the Schilling's test is not to diagnose B12 deficiency. The Schilling's test is to help you answer the question, why did you get B12 deficient? Why did you get B12 deficiency? What is the reason? Why did this happen to you? Do you have pernicious anemia? Do you have diphyllobothrium lotham? Do you have pancreatic insufficiency? Schilling's test does not diagnose B12 deficiency. Schilling's test tells you why did it occur. Schilling's test tells you why, etiology, cause. Increased bilirubin and increased LDH. Looks like hemolysis, but you get a normal reticulocyte count. Most common neurological problem, peripheral. Folate has no neuro. B12 has any neuro with the most common being peripheral. Posterior column deficiency damage, you get a B12 level, and if it's normal, an increased methylmalonic acid level. Anti-intrinsic factor. Anti-intrinsic factor and anti-parietal cell antibodies replace what we used to do the Schilling's test for. 
We used to do a Schilling's test to determine the etiology of the vitamin B12 level. In this case, we no longer have to do a Schilling's. We can simply get antibodies against intrinsic factor and parietal cell, and if they're there, we know it was pernicious anemia. Subacute combined degeneration of the cord. It may not be the most common neurological manifestation of B12 deficiency, but it's been considered the most characteristic because nothing else does that except syphilis.